Welcome to Clinical Tips. Today we're going to talk about biochemistry tests or biochemistry panel. But first imagine this. You're a young doctor at a local hospital. When an ambulance brings in a 47-year-old woman after rescuing her in a national park where she got lost two days ago, you proceed to stabilize the patient and you order a complete blood count and a biochemistry test. For this case, we'll focus on the most important values when reading a biochemistry test especially since this is one of the most common tests you will encounter as a healthcare professional. First of all, we have to understand that biochemistry test elements vary depending on hospital or what you order. And in this case, we'll talk about the glucose, the sodium, and the renal function part. But there's way more than that. So let's start looking at our patient's biochemistry test. First, we see our patient has a glucose of 65 milligrams over deciliter, or 3.6 millimoles per liter, depending on what unit you use. We will categorize this value as hypoglycemia because it's below 70 milligrams over deciliter, which is the threshold for hypoglycemia. Let's remember our patient was just rescued after being lost. So she might have not eaten in hours or days, and that might be the cause of her hypoglycemia. Recall patients with the hypoglycemia might experience symptoms of shakiness, confusion, tachycardia, and hunger. As for treatment, for glucose levels above 54 mg over deciliter, we'll usually treat it with glucose or a fast-acting carbohydrate high in glucose, like a chocolate or a very sweet juice, for example. It's such a, like a treat, you know. As for her sodium levels, we notice they are actually quite high. Let's recall that the normal values for sodium go from 135 to 145, and our patient has a sodium level of 149. What do you think our patient is experiencing high sodium levels? Well, our patient is dehydrated, so that means she's mostly losing fluids from the extracellular compartment, resulting in increased sodium level in that same compartment. In a simplified way, it's not that she has more sodium, it's just that she has less extracellular volume for the same amount of sodium. You follow that? Now, for the renal function, we have to understand creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, or BUN. Let's put this in an example. If you ever get lost in the middle of the forest, like our patient, two things will happen. First, you're gonna get dehydrated, as we talked earlier. And second, you're gonna get hungry. And when you get hungry and you don't have food, your body will need to produce energy from somewhere, right? Like your own fats or proteins, resulting in a catabolic state. All of this will produce more waste products, like creatinine and urea, for example. So what would happen to our renal function? Basically, the increase of those waste products will outpace the filtering capacity of our kidneys. And furthermore, the dehydration will decrease the volume that goes to our kidneys resulting in a decreased GFR or glomerular frustration rate. This decrease in the GFR will further increase the creatinine and the BUN levels. And that's what we're seeing in our patient. So I hope that was not too confusing and that you learned how to read some of the elements of the biochemistry test. We will leave the liver function test, which is very important, for another video. So remember to drink lots of water to keep your homeostasis going and to share this video. See you next time.